Very good morning, all the participants who are attending this session on people analytics. I'd like to welcome all the participants to this program. And before uh, I'll start the session, I'd like to thank my dean and academic head and uh, MDP team to provide such a wonderful opportunity to me to meet your people through this program. So once again, I welcome all the participants to this program. Now we will move to the session. The session is on people analytics. So what about the session plan? Introduction on people analytics and case. We are going to discuss about one case. Types of people analytics. LAMP framework. HR Indicators and dashboard. Finally, question and answers. Just kindly have a look on this slide. Amount of data we are generating is immensely, uh, which provides unprecedented opportunities. 100 hours of video uploaded on YouTube, 200 million emails are sent, 20 million photos are viewed, 3 lakh tweets are sent, 2.5 million queries made on Google, and 90% of all data ever created, which was created in the past two years. 80% of the data generated by organization is unstructured. All these things happen every one minute across the world, which means, so data is everywhere. Enormous data is available across the world. So without data today, so the business is is doing in a very Herculean way. And in future, it may be without data, it is absolutely not possible at all. Right. So the companies like Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Ola, Swiggy, Zomato, right, and so on. All these companies are using so plenty of customer data. So the customer's data are supporting to these companies in the phenomenal way and enriching their business and improve their organizational performance. So the companies are using the customer data to understand the customer pattern, the customer mindset, how the company, customers are thinking, right? On account of that, so they are uh, launching their products. And so they are launching the products in which time, geographical location, and so what, what genders they are buying the product more, a fixed the price. So which means that data is playing predominantly massive role for the company's decision making and improve the organizational performance. So the next slide is all about, so having said that, so data is playing predominantly massive role across the world in the business arena today. So now the question is, it's a million dollar question. So how are we handling the data? So how are we uh, utilizing the data? How are we visualizing the data? And how are we analyzing the data with the help of statistical tools? And how are we utilizing the data to check the interesting strategies, planning, and improve the organization performance? That's a million dollar question today. So that's what Mr. Joe's Besson told. So how are we utilizing the data on account of that the organization performance will get improved? So HR decisions are no longer based on gut feeling. So all the HR students and the HR fraternity, you know very well. So there are three types of HRs, operational HRs, strategic HR, and data-driven HR. What about the operational HR?
linked to do learning and development. Performance appraisal moved to performance management. Like performance appraisal, it was a six month process, yearly process, end of the performance appraisals, just blindly say this is what your performance. But today, it is a performance management. What does it mean performance management? It's all about a continuous process. Even the companies have abolished Belco today. The companies started and already there's some well-reputed companies implemented. So a uh, check-ins, continuous performance management. That was strategy HR. So now, so we moved from strategy HR to data-driven HR. What does it mean data-driven HR? Having said that, if you want to bring the people to organization like a talent acquisition, as a HR manager or a functional manager, right? So while during the interview, during the selection process, certainly your intuition and gut feeling, so plays predominantly major role to bring the people to organization, right? Once you use the gut feeling and uh, intuition, if you selected the guy, but absolutely there is no guarantee that the guy will come and perform in the organization. So it will be the uh, problem to the organization in future. In order to avoid that, so organization has to, so uh, utilize a data-driven HR today. What is data-driven HR today? So the company, if the company wants to recruit any individual, the company has to see the individual previous records. The which company the guy has worked? And what about the guy experience? What about the guy average tenure? Or what kind of projects the guy had worked? And what are the value addition the guy had performed to the organization? Right? What about the uh, guy uh, personalities? And you just go to the guy, respective guy, individual LinkedIn. So who are all the people endorsed? And what about the guy previous bosses? All this information, absolutely data. As a registered recruiter, right, you have to see all this information thoroughly. right? And you have to take a call, have to bring the talent to the organization. So this is called data-driven HR. So just kind of see the point, HR decision are no longer based on gut feeling, which means that so the HR managers or a functional managers, you are not supposed to take any decision based on gut feeling and intuition, right? Kindly stick to data, right? But here I want to say a very important point. So I won't recommend, so data will predict 100% very precisely, absolutely not. Maybe I would say, 80% 90% but I would recommend in a very strong way. So data will predict much better than your intuition and gut feeling. So that's what my crux towards this slide. So next slide is all about demand evidence and think critically, right? So we have to bring enormous data and we have to apply our critical thinking. We have to utilize the statistical tools and we have to analyze the reviews, interpret in a different way. We have to discuss to the people. Of course, you are not supposed to take a decision alone. I have to discuss to the people, brainstorm it, and bring a lot of interesting points, or do it, and finally take a call. So without data, you are just having one opinion, right? The opinion is not valid in today's uh, uh, business world. Right, now we will go to the people analytics. What about the people analytics? Before I'll explain about the people analytics, I'll move to one interesting case. It's very interesting case, so which is a quite famous across the world. Well, if you know much familiar about uh, the company called as a Google. So the case was happened in Google. So the case uh, is called as a oxygen. So what about the case? The case title is Do Managers Matter? In the year of 2009, which has happened. So old age HR statement, and most of the students and even the HR fraternity, even the people who are working in organization, we very thoroughly know that uh, employees who are leaving from the organization absolutely on account of immediate managers across the world. Uh, which means that immediate managers are playing predominantly major role for employee retention, the respective team retention in the organization. So the Google wanted to check that because the Google people, so they have decided that, okay, so the managers should be thoroughly uh, highly professional. 
as long as the managers are really very good certainly so they can develop the good team at the same time the so company's culture employees morale and the employee retention and the turnover so would be less employee retention would be very high so the company wanted to check that through the people analytics that time people analytics a director mr prashant sethi right so he had taken an initiative with the help of his team right he had conducted the interesting survey employee satisfaction survey uh, on the managers right and he had collected a lot of information from the subordinates through the survey right and uh, performance reviews and feedback forms and collected the details through the some other sources as well right so the employees had recommended okay employees had given a two type of datas towards the organization so one is uh, quantitative data another one is a qualitative data just kindly have a look on the points so what are the datas the employees have given about their respective managers so be a good coach empower your team and don't micromanage express interest in team members success and personal well being don't be sissy be productive and result oriented uh, be a good communicator and listen to your team help your employees with career development have a clear vision strategy for the team have a key technical skills so that you can advise the team this uh, eight important areas eight important traits the employees had recommended to organization their manager they are supposed to pushes the managers they don't have uh, these skills absolutely they cannot develop their teams so these data qualitative data so have been collected from the surveys how they have collected so the employees informations like a phrases text so quantifying information pricing compliments compliance so which mean that quantitative data and qualitative data so both are playing equal role to understand about the people from this case we could understand that people analytics is all about and we have to analyze the people so based on the people data i would say like a employees absenteeism report employees biometric punctual biometric measures employees participation in meeting how the employee sent a mail in the mail how the person is drafting the sentence what vocabulary what's the uh, tone and crux of the sentence right through this we can understand the people right we, we can understand the people personality this is all about people analytics understand the people behavior based on the people data absolutely what they are doing day to day so according to that we can analyze the people data right so eventually i would say people analytics is all about so we have to measure the people based on the data and with the help of statistical tools and we have to uh, interpret in a very such a different perspective finally we have to take a decision on account of that so next is all about types of people analytics three important analytics uh, i think you know very well most of the people so they have an idea about uh, three important analytics one is all about descriptive analytics the next is predictive analytics the last one is a prescriptive analytics so so these three analytics are playing a major role in people analytics as well what about descriptive analytics we just kindly have a look on this data it is descriptive analytics data so the data is pertaining to employee absenteeism data the employee name is mr kumar i am going to describe about the employee mr kumar is a very good employee highly committed and uh, he has a good knowledge and skills and uh, ethics and work ethic is absolutely brilliant so he is a asset for the organization so we are going to see the last two years is uh, leave record quarter one the first quarter two years back the first quarter for the three months he has taken three days leave second quarter three months four days leave third quarter he has taken two days leave 
fourth quarter he has taken three days leave fifth quarter he has taken two days leave sixth quarter he has taken three days leave seventh quarter three days leave and eighth quarter so nine days leave just kindly see the data here right till first quarter to seventh quarter on an average right maximum is four so minimum is two which means that pattern of that employees leave procedure is each month one days that's a pattern of so this is what the mindset of the employee this is what the leave pattern of the particular employee for the last two years except last quarter but if you see the eighth quarter the employee has taken nine days leave which means that so something got changed here from his pattern this is called behavior pattern of that particular employee right so through the data in fact we did not talk to the employee we did not call and we, uh, we did not speak to the employee as a hr manager i have a dashboard i'll tell you what is dashboard in few uh, in coming slides as a hr manager i have a dashboard having said that mr kumar is a asset for the organization in my dashboard so that it, through the display it is getting displayed so the kumar so the last quarter had a nine days had taken a nine days leave right so which means that it is uh, uh, displayed in the red color immediately as a hr managers which will come to my mind so kumar is asset for my organization he is a good employee and so why did he take nine days leave so now the question pops up to my mind right so what i will do is here what as a hr manager i'm supposed to do so since he is asset for the organization i have to call employees i have to call mr kumar and i have to go and talk to mr kumar voluntarily i have to understand what about his problem it could be personal problem it could be financial problem it could be uh, maybe uh, kind of family issues or it could be kind of uh, uh, health issues right it could be maybe a problem with the boss it could be problem with the colleagues the working environment might not have been good the culture is not good right so which means that so based on that nine days leave as a hr manager or a functional manager you have to take a proactive step and talk to the uh, employees right talk to mr kumar and understand what is the problem of mr kumar right otherwise what will happen right so maybe the kumar is not satisfied the organization culture kumar had issues with the working environment mr kumar had a problem with the colleagues or his boss maybe he might have felt the workload is really very high maybe uh, the kumar will put on the paper immediately this nine days will communicate to uh, the organization that kumar in some trouble which means that the manager has to take proactiveness initiativeness the data communicates to the hr manager and the functional manager you have to take voluntary initiatives to the respective faculties this is called descriptive analytics what is descriptive analytics is all about descriptive analytics is all about what has happened in the past okay we have to see the past absolutely okay so as long as it is good absolutely there is no problem we have to retain it something is a fizzy something is not up to the level immediately we have to intervene and we have to discuss and we have to uh, plan change our strategies and we have to take a call that's called descriptive analytics right next we will move to the predictive analytics what about the predictive analytics having said that the previous data eighth quarter right so you just see the number it is a nine days so here we are going to predict it is abnormal mr kumar behavior got changed something problem is happening to mr kumar i don't know what is the problem so he which means that here you have to take an initiative to call mr kumar and discuss with mr kumar which means that you are predicting something something is abnormal his behavior pattern is totally changed so here we are going to predict right so something is going to happen in future maybe if he is going to put on the paper it's a huge loss for the organization since he is asset for the organization so this is what we are going to predict so from the uh, past data descriptive analytics right so this is called predictive analytics so from the data absolutely we can predict so what is going to happen in future so for example employee retention having said that so mr kumar case so absolutely you can retain mr kumar 
if you just uh, discuss to mr kumar understand his problem and solve it if he needs a promotion if he needs a good increment if he has uh, some personal issues so counsel him provide some leaves and account of that you can uh, retain mr kumar employee retention target retention can be done right employee behavior patterns absolutely we can tap through the uh, things and uh, so the next interesting example about the predictive analytics so google data analytics test it is also another interesting case so which is being practiced in google data analytics test just kindly see the scores here so two employees mr raja and mr ravi mr raja and mr ravi so both have joined the organization 2015 google right that time google had conducted the interview process selection test and interview process during the selection test so the google had conducted data analytics test psychometric test and intelligent test the google had conducted so they have taken interesting traits like honesty flexibility work ethics positive attitude self motivated effective communication team player all these traits so the company had taken for uh, selection test so out of 10 so they have calculated just kindly see the score the first score 7878898 so honesty 7 flexibility 8 work ethic 7 positive attitude 8 self motivated 8 the first score effective communication 9 team player 8 so all these scores is connected to mr raja mr raja scored all these scores So four five four five five six five. This goes scored by Mr. Ravi. So which means that Raja scored well compared to Mr. Ravi. Now we will move to the present performance and tenure. Two thousand nine, so twenty nineteen. So after four years, twenty fifteen both got uh, selected, and twenty nineteen. So the present performance and tenure which we are looking. Mr. Raja, so had contributed eighty percent, eighty-eight percentage to the organization, and he has been sticking to the organization last four years, from two thousand twenty fifteen to twenty nineteen. What about Mr. Ravi? Mr. Ravi, so twenty seventeen he left from the organization, but till twenty seventeen, since he joined, the two years had contributed only fifty-two percentage. so what about the interpretation from this data just kindly see the scores of both mr raja and ravi having said that raja had scored brilliantly well compared to mr ravi right so which means that since raja has scored very well so his tenure and present performance is really very good compared to ravi as mr ravi did not perform very well so his tenure also very poor he left the organization two years back and uh, so his contribution to the organization also only 55 percentage so which means that so what we are predicting from the descriptive statistics from this data this data communicates about and recommend to the organization that here after certainly we have to conduct the intelligence and personality test so we have to select the people based on the scores because mr raja had performed very well right had scored very well in the intelligent test and his uh, performance in tenure is absolutely brilliant so which means that whoever perform in the test very well right we have to hire the people which means that there is no compromise on the test score at the same time we have to conduct the test for each and every interviews for each and every candidates so this is called predictive analytics which means that 2015 data we are using and we are uh, uh, predicting what is going to happen in the future this is called predictive analytics from the employee side employees performance can be predicted based on the employee's previous scores what about the prescriptive analytics prescriptive analytics is uh, all about uh, we are going to provide once the prediction is done so we are going to provide a, a very good solution for that we are going to identify the very good solution we are going to provide very good recommendation to process uh, to process it and to take care of the uh, interesting decision making that's called prescriptive analytics 
what are the possible and interesting and uh, a good solution to overcome that uh, challenges or issues in future right if you take employee retention again i just went back to mr kumar case since he had taken nine days leave it's abnormal uh, behavior pattern right so the prescriptive solution as a manager or a hr manager i have to call mr kumar and sit with mr kumar and understand his problem for example he may be telling that he is not satisfied the working culture maybe he is deserve to be promoted or he needs some good increment right absolutely i have to understand that and you have to provide a very good solution for that if he needs a promotion if he is asset provide promotion or if he needs a good increment you feel so his performance is absolutely brilliant you can provide or he needs a transfer so if it is possible kindly transfer him so that's called what are the best alternative method which you can uh, provide to overcome that particular challenges or a solution better you just kindly check it as early as possible that's what i'm telling as early as possible kindly do it right so that's very important connect to the uh, prescriptive analytics maybe i'd say how much money do i store in atm right for example festival period okay it's a very uh, hot spot location the crowd is really very high the people crowd is really very high okay so what i am supposed to i uh, keep the money in the atms at the same money i am not supposed to keep it right so i have to i predict so what about the hot spot what about the people crowd how many people are throwing over there so according to that i have to store the money in order to take care of the people and their satisfaction level as well how many buses i have to operate during the uh, diwali or uh, some other festival season so that's all about the predictive sorry prescriptive analytics right so far we have discussed uh, about the data and uh, interactions about people analytics and case and types of people analytics the first segment of uh, people analytics got over so we will move to the next segment it's a framework generally in people analytics so the very important is framework right. now most of the people they are strongly believe analytics is all about the data we have to collect the data and we have to uh, utilize the statistical tools utilize some techniques right and eventually we have to identify some interpretation and we have to recommend the companies absolutely i won't recommend that right framework is very very important in analytics what is framework right the framework is all about there is a framework called as a lot of frameworks are there uh connected to the people analytics right lam framework which we are going to discuss today people capability maturity model is there hcm 21 human capital management is there talent maturity model is there and of course we have to discuss balanced scorecard and hr scorecards all these things are uh, absolutely playing a massive role for the analytics right so it is a base it's a fundamental right what data are you supposed to take what are you to, uh, what are you going to measure it that's a base exactly we are going to discuss now it's a one framework which is called as a lamp framework right what about the lamp framework l stands for logic a stands for analytics m stands for measure and p stands for process is called lamp framework Let's kindly see the slide. So the slides, uh, slide is communicating about. Uh, it is tempting to draw conclusion, but remember that statistics don't tell the complete story. Let's kindly see ice cream sales, shark attacks, correlation coefficient. So generally, the climate is hot and sunny. The climate is so hot, absolutely, the people will. tempted to have ice creams and the people will go to beach and have a do the swimming and have a bath right so here ice cream sales and shark attacks is correlated because of the climate is so hot and sunny but if you take in the different perspectives that's what logic perspective critical thinking perspective right so ice cream sales and shark attacks absolutely they are not caused each other they are not interrelated each other both are different variables this variable one variable is not influencing another variable which means that the people who had ice cream 
that people are targeted by sure that people are attacked at, attacked by sure absolutely no there is no uh, cause and effect relationship here so they both are not cost each other today right so statistics don't tell the complete story that's what the framework is very important you have to apply the logic here right so what about the logic having said that the previous case people analytics in google that oxygen project just think about visualize the google companies uh, mr prashant sethi the people analytics director and his team logic behind that operation google oxygen why did they measure the manager performance why did not they measure why did not they conduct the operation uh, towards the entry level employees or middle level management or top level management why did they measure the manager a performance right one aspect is yes of course managers are playing very very important role on account of the uh, managers the people will be leaving from the organization right maybe that is a one logic or maybe another logic or another critical thinking perspectives yes managers are taking care of the uh, lot of people right as long as managers are because entry level people are reporting to the managers so managers are really very good highly professional right so they are having a good leadership qualities good team building qualities they have a good communication skills good technical skills certainly they can take care of the employees very well maybe that is a logic behind that maybe that's what the perspective of the companies so the question is why did not they concentrate the top level people executive level yes executives are very important maybe they they might have studied about executives or they might have studied about the middle level management but specifically they studied about the managers that's what the logic is all about that's what absolutely so that project got successful and the culture got implemented and even so the entire world is study about uh, google oxygen case studies the moment the people analytics comes uh, absolutely oxygen google so case studies uh, across the world that's called logic right maybe i would say what is logic please apply your critical thinking understand the logic identify the right metric each and every metrics are important each and every indicators are important but all the indicators all the metrics are not playing as equal as in all the organization right so one organization for example i would say employee engagement is playing very very important role in one organization it may not be playing important role in some other organization employee experience is playing important role in one organization it may not be playing important role in some other organization right but metric wise all the metrics are important indicators wise all the indicators are important but as a hr managers you have to apply your critical thinking and the logic what metric i am supposed to take because the metric is connected to your investment right you have to invest on that right so the moment you invest right so absolutely which has to provide the good return on investment but if you choose a wrong investment right maybe the wrong metric on that you just invest it maybe the eventually the return on investment is very poor right so here i have to apply the logic that's what having said that framework is very important framework is a fundamental and base the moment you identify the right metric right indicator certainly you can go for the survey and collect the data and you just feed it into the a machine Maybe the machine will provide a good interpretation. So that's the after process. But very important is critical thinking. Next, uh, the component of lamp is a measure. What are you supposed to measure? Having said that, which metric you are supposed to measure? Are you measuring the right thing? Yes. Just kindly of see the interesting. Uh, question is employee turnover good or bad i just pause here is employee turnover good or bad absolutely already have asked the question to many students in the classrooms even the corporate people so the people say employee turnover is bad for the organization right? because they have invested the money to the employees we have trained the employees we have invested the money to the employees so we have given the training to the employees like a two months three months or a four months right and we have spent the huge money for the recruitment cost right and we had spent the money to the consultancy on consultancy the employee got recruited 
right? Employee join six months or employee join one year. After that, employee will leave. The new employees we are going to recruit. What will happen? Employees we have to spend a huge money, training cost, recruitment cost, and employee will come and settle, and it takes a lot of time. Which means that if you connect all these things, absolutely, employee turnover is pretty much bad. That's what the people perspectives, but absolutely not. Employee turnover is good. If you see employee turnover is a one metric, you won't apply the logic here. You will miss it. Employee turnover is divided into two important metric: functional turnover and dysfunctional turnover. What about the functional turnover? Functional turnover is all about uh, bad employees are leaving from the organization, right? It's a good for organization. A dysfunctional turnover. So good employees are leaving from the organization. It's a bad for the organization. Again, I'm telling. Functional turnover, it's good for organization. Dysfunctional turnover, it's a bad for organization. So which means that, so you are not supposed to come to the conclusion that employee turnover is bad. For example, you have to take a data of what about the percentage of employee turnover. If you see that one data, that data won't communicate the proper information to you. You have to split the data, right? So how many functional turnovers out of the employee turnover? How many dysfunctional turnover out of the uh, employee turnover? As long as functional turnovers are there, absolutely there is no problem. Employees will leave because the employees are liability for the organization. They are not asset for the organization because they are a very poor performers. One year or two years or three years, the employees have been in the organization. They did not contribute anything. Voluntarily, the employee wants to leave, let them leave. No, no issues. But the dysfunctional turnovers, like Kumar case, having said that, maybe the person is really very good. Right? But the employee wants to live here, you have to take a call. You have to take a proactive approach. Right? I have to call the employee, discuss to the employees, and retain the employee. This is called measure. Right? So the logic was over that. This is the way you have to critically see the metric. For example, see the employee turnover is one metric. No, it's a problem. You have to see the employee turnover into two interesting metrics. So having said that, employee attrition, Employee retention, employee engagement, employee absenteeism, all these things are not playing an important role in organization. So the next one is analytics. So for analytics, uh, so what about the analytics? Once you measure the right metric, you have to go for the survey, right? Collect the quantifying data, quantitative data or the qualitative data, right? Utilize the statistical tools, any interesting statistical tools, you can utilize it. And of course, uh, you can interpret the result, get the result and you can interpret it. That's called analytics. But the important uh, phase is the so logic and measure. Once analytics is over, of course, you just collected the uh, interesting information, you have ever interpreted such information, then finally, you have to implement that. That's called process. So what about the process? Process is a change management. All the companies are not ready to uh, accept the change. The companies have to come proactively. The companies have, have to take initiative, ready to accept the change, right? Even in this case, Google Oxygen. So after the interpretation, after the employees have recommended eight important key areas, but after that, the company ready to implement that. That's called process. Knowledge transfer, change management, ready to accept the new strategies ready to move uh, for the future direction. That's called future oriented. So that's called as a process. So which means that, so the lamp framework is playing predominantly massive role in the analytics side, especially the people analytics side. So third segment is uh, HR metrics. Once the framework uh, is over, so we have to move to the HR metrics. What does it mean HR metrics? Metrics is all about uh, to measure the HR functional activities. So what about the talent acquisition activities? So does company uh, do very uh, strong talent acquisition activities? Right. And uh, what about the employee turnover? So what about the employee retention? What about the return on human capital? What about the uh, training uh, expenses per employee? 
So all these things are uh, important in the HR areas. So we have to take each and every functional areas and even the sub functional areas and we have to identify what all the metrics are there pertaining to the functional areas, right? And we have to measure it. That's called HR metric. So metric is a scale. Of course, we have to take and measure the functional areas, but analytics is totally different from the metrics. I would say, for example, metric, how many people uh, do we have in the organization? Approximately 100 people. This is a metric. But for this data, we cannot come to any conclusion or we cannot uh, take very interesting decision making. It is a simple metric. It doesn't play very important role in that. But coming to the analytics side, right? So I would say, let's kind of have a look. What are the key characteristics of top performers? Right, which means that we have to take here two or three important metrics here. The first metric is who are all the top performers? The first metric. Second, we have to identify what are the key characteristics of the top performer, right? And maybe you would say uh, the top performers and the educational background, which institution they have studied, right? What about, and the top performers and their personality level, right? So which means that if you take analytics, analytics are having or analytics are requiring a lot of variables. One metric, a lot of metrics, one, two, three, four metrics. But you just kindly see the one uh, matrix, what, what is the head count in this case? This is what the difference between metrics and analytics. So if you want to analyze any, uh, any metrics, you need more variables. With the help of statistics, you have to analyze it. Just kindly see the second one. How many people did we hire? It's a metric. So what are our best recruiting sources of top performers? Which means that having said that, who are all the top performers? We have to take a call. And we have to take well, what are the recruiting sources through the website, so through the HR team and through the consultancies, employee referrals, right? So for example, talent acquisition, HR metric example, talent acquisition. So the first metric is called as a offer acceptance rate, right? It's one interesting metric, a metric pertaining to the talent acquisition. So how many people accepted the offer? So the offer letter, which we have given to the interviewees, right? So the people who got offer letters, but all the people, they won't join, right? So a lot of reasons behind for that. So that's all about the offer acceptance rate. Absolutely, we have to do this some calculation for that. Number of offers, offers accepted, number of offers made. For example, uh, 20 people out of 30 people accepted offers, which means that Offer acceptance rate is 66.66 percentage. What about the next metric pertaining to talent acquisition? Cost per hire. For example, so how much money I am spending to hire uh, one candidate? I would say like uh, uh, through the HR team in-house uh, in-house record uh, HR team, how many people I am? How much money I am spending to uh, recruit people, right? Maybe I would say uh, in the consultancy side, how much money I'm spending and uh, recruit the people, bring the talent to the organization. So which is a quality side and which uh, has a very less money, I have to take a call, right? That's all about the cost per hire. New hire performance satisfaction, it's very important metric now and pertaining to the millennial side, right? So the millennials, 
right? So they won't stick to the organization pretty long term, right? On an average, the millennials will be quitting from the organizations. So on an average, their average tenure is like a one year or a one year, three months, right? So here, as soon as the millennial join, end of the third month, the organization has to uh, take a survey. What about their sat satisfaction level? Immediately, the employees are satisfied. If the organization has to continue that, if the employees are not at all satisfied, immediately the organization has to change the strategy to uh, satisfy the uh, new employees so that we can retain the employees. That's the next metric. Passive recruitment. It's another interesting metric connected to the talent acquisition through the LinkedIn. What does it mean, passive recruitment? So some employees, they have been sticking to the organization pretty long time, like a 10 years, 15 years, 17 years, 18 years. Yeah, that's it for the organization. They have a very good skills and very good knowledge. So they have a, a very good potential, right? And uh, through the employee coaching, maybe uh, that employees are, cannot be tabbed. As a HR manager, what are you supposed to do? You have to go to the LinkedIn, right? And you have to see the employee profile, employee tenure, and uh, what organization they have been working, and what about their contribution to the organization, right? And what about their uh, knowledge and skills, right? All these informations you can tap easily, right? Through the LinkedIn process, right? And eventually you can personally, maybe through the mail, you just uh, connect to the respective employees and try to push the employee to your organization. This is called passive recruitment. So passive recruitment means the employees who are not interested to apply to any other organization as the employees are pretty much comfortable in the existing organization. And uh, so they have been sticking to the organization pretty long time. So absolutely, they are not interested to come out and it's very tough to coach that employees uh, uh, through the LinkedIn, absolutely it is possible. A retention of talent, it's the next metric. Average years of stay, it's another metric. High flight risk employees, it's another interesting metric connected to the uh, uh, retention of talent. What about the high flight risk employees? High flight risk employees is uh, all about the employees who are a top performer in the organization, have been sticking to, sticking to the organization pretty long time, right? And uh, so they are playing a very massive role in the organization, right? So in case the employees will leave organization Maybe they lose uh, such a very good employee asset. In such case, organization always keep on observing that employees, right? So ensure that the employees should not leave from the organization. That's called high flight risk employees. Next interesting uh, metric called as uh, in Japos is practicing 90 days voluntary turnover rate, right? So new employees uh, have joined the Japos after the induction uh, training period. After the 90 days, uh, Japos will uh, ask the new employees. Right? So in case any employees are not satisfied, the employees can leave from the organization. But for that, Japos will pay the money to the organization. Certain money organization will pay and please quit from the organization. As long as you are not interested, maybe last three months you might have felt your organization, our organization culture is not suitable to you, better you just quit. But for that organization is paying the money to the employees. So this is what their uh, talent acquisition at the same time to retain the very good people. So you are aligned to the organization culture, better stick, otherwise better quit with a very happy and positive note. Diversity metrics, if you see, uh, next is the diversity metrics. What about the diversity percentage of organization? What about the diversity higher ratio? Gender, male, female, transgender, uh, LGBT, Right. So that's the thing. Percentage uh, diversity at executive level. Right. So what about the diversity level in the top management, corporate governance, board level, uh, president level, vice president level? How many male? How many females? What about the age? What about the uh, uh, Asians and Americans, North Americans and so on? So this is all about the percentage diversity at executives level. Next, I'll go to the uh, learning and development metrics. So training hours, for example, learning and development, training hours per full-time employees. So on an average, uh, what about the training hours as an organization you are providing to full-time employees? For example, if you take Google, it's 120 hours mandatory training programs, right? Irrespective of your designation, irrespective of your experience. So every year you have to undergo 120 hours mandatory training program. It's a culture over there, right? So 
but about other organizations if you take north america on an average it's a 43 hours but google it's 120 hours training average so which this is another interesting metric training expenses per employees the, so how much money are we spending to get trained right so that's a, another interesting metric pertaining to the uh, learning and development fine so now uh, i have completed the metrics I'll move to the next part called as indicators. What about the indicators and what is the difference between metric and indicators? I would say all the indicators are a metric, but all the metrics are not indicators. Again, I repeat, all the indicators are metric, but all the metrics are not indicators. That is the reason we used to call it as a key performance indicators. Having said that, one metric which we have taken so how many employees are working in organization it is a one metric but absolutely such an extent uh, it doesn't play any important role for organization performance at an extent it may happen but certain extent it won't uh, create much impact to the organization performance how many male employees are working certain how many female employees are working sometimes it may not support to the but it is also one of the metric it may not support it may support but it may not support as well. But indicators are not like that. Indicators means that it is also a metric, but we have to choose a, a metric that metric certainly will influence and create an impact to the organization performance. That is called indicators. That is the reason we used to call it a key performance indicators. There are two indicators out there. So one is a, a leading indicators. Another one is a lagging indicators, two indicators. Right. So what about the leading indicators? A leading indicator is instrumental and leading indicators influencing and it's creating an uh, impact to the organization change to for the organization uh, future performance. It's all about the leading indicators. What about the lagging indicators? Lagging indicators, it's kind of a, a descriptive statistic, descriptive analytics, the post data. It was happened over the, uh, already. We cannot change it, but which is communicating something, uh, which is providing input to the leading indicators, which direction we are supposed to move. Right. I would say leading indicator is a predictive measurement. Lagging indicator is an output measurement. Just kindly have a look here. A lead and lag indicator, leading and lagging indicators. Lagging indicators, last month's sales performance of the branch. Leading indicators. Right. If you want to improve the sales performance of the branch, increase the customer calls. Maybe the coming month, bring new customers, train the employees to go and attract and bring the new customers. At the same time, retain the existing customers, which means that all the leading indicators which are oriented and key performance indicators, you are not supposed to miss this particular metric. If you miss it, certainly you cannot uh, develop your business. That's what leading indicators, lagging indicators communicate this is what happened already. We are say lagging indicator is an output, which is an input for the leading indicators. Coming to the HR side, last year employee turnover rate, lagging indicators. Maybe for example, turnover rate was quite uh, high. If you want to uh, reduce the employee turnover rate, go for the leading indicator, increase the employee retention rate, increase the employee engagement activities in the organization and recruit right people which means that lagging indicator was employee turnover, right? And focus more on leading indicators in concentrate employee retention activities, concentrate more on employee engagement activities and recruit right people, certainly. So maybe the coming quarters or coming uh, year, employee turnover would get reduced. So that's all about your indicator side. So the last segment of my HR analytics is all about dashboard. Once the metric is done, so we have to uh, see the metric through visualization. What is dashboard? So we have to see the metric through the visualization that is called dashboard. So the human mind, the human mind has a power and to provide and to take a very effective decisions, the moment you see the things in the visual representation, right? Just kindly of see the screen, right? So sample HR metrics, average tenure, Offer acceptance rate, cost of HR per employees. Three metrics, I just kept it on one screen. So what is dashboard? 
generally just see this dashboard right one recruitment funnel monthly metrics pipeline efficiency of hiring application sources decline reasons active pipeline and on top 15 hired so totally seven metrics i kept it in one place so objective of the dashboard is you have to keep all the metrics whatever we have uh, decided we have collected the data okay we have to convert it to into pictorial representation like a graphs visual representation and can keep it in a one slide okay as a manager so you have to see that and you have to interrelate and compare each and every metric for taking effective decision making that's called dashboard right so the dashboard is useful to i can compare all the metrics and finally you can check a call for example i would say you just kindly see one metric here application sources so totally five sources based on that we are sourcing the applications website indeed linkedin agency four sources so we have so uh, uh, sourcing the people through that right the agency side out of uh, 15 people we have hired only one person we have selected right so which means that so agency of course it's external agencies we have to pay the money so through the website we have hired 47 percentage of people agency side only one person so why do we spend money for the agency side better we just concentrate our website improve the website visualization more right the people will get attracted by the website the people will apply more or just kindly maybe inform to the hr people spend some good time with the linkedin improve their technical skills in linkedin hire the people through linkedin instead of agency side because it's a money involved maybe you just uh, uh, next time you just remove the agencies and concentrate on the uh, uh, rest of the remaining three sources you can save the money this is called dashboard advantages maybe i would say the monthly metrics maybe the next uh, dashboard june 2016 30 days i took hire only p- one peer person may 2016 so i have hired people right so which means that why june uh, only one person what is the problem where is the problem so which means that you just kind of see the dashboard you can easily understand where is the problem All right so that is the ultimate aim of the dashboard i would say finally dashboard is for effective decision making we have to keep all the metrics in one uh, place compare it interrelate it and apply a critical thinking process and take a very good decision that's ultimate objective of dashboard so with this i like to uh, complete my uh, presentation so kindly ask questions whatever question pertaining to the people analytics hr side kindly post to me i'm ready to answer to you people thank you so much from my side yeah so uh, if anybody wants to ask question please raise your hands and kindly put your question please Yes. Yes, sir. Tell me, sir, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Arul. Uh, this is uh, Prasad from Ramaya Polytechnic. Yes, sir. Uh, as I am heading uh, the department, yes, sir. I think uh, I need to tailor this people analytics model. Yes, sir. Uh, to a certain extent, to carry out my departmental activities. Yes, sir. To that extent, uh, it is helpful. Thank you very much. thank you sir thank you swati 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 is unmute hello yeah ma'am tell me ma'am hello yes ma'am tell me ma'am unmute 
unmute. She has to unmute, right? Yes, I think she's having some issue. You can, uh, there are so many checks. You can check. There is no questions from the people, sir. So I think she has to unmute that so that. Yeah. So some questions uh, related to uh, I'm I'm receiving the questions from the chat. Some questions related to so how to minimize the lot of talent pertaining to that, right? So how to uh, bring the right talent to the organization. So having said that, uh, already I told, right? So you have to take the employee's previous uh, work history, what company the employee has worked, right? And what about the uh, project he has worked, right? And what about the institution he has studied, right? What about his personality? What about his uh, skills and knowledge? And you can do some personality test, right? So based on the past data, absolutely, you can analyze the uh, people behavior, then you can bring the people to organizations, right? So talent acquisitions, uh, having said that, uh, uh, bring the right people to the organization is absolutely not an easy task to do. Right? So you have to put a lot of uh, effort and you have to think from the different perspectives. Of course, data is playing uh, a very interesting role into that. I hope I answered your question, how to bring the right challenge to the organization. Next question. Yeah, some uh, ma'am asked, so about the HR dashboard, so what about the HR dashboard? So HR dashboard is all about uh, Swati ma'am. So you have put the question HR dashboard. So what about the HR dashboard? Dashboard, it is a visual representation. Uh, we have to keep all the metrics, okay, together in a one place, okay? And what are the metrics do you need? You just kindly keep the, all the metrics in a one place and you have to compare the metrics from one metric to another metric. So just kindly compare it and take a decision making. Right. So if you see one metric, maybe you are not able to analyze uh, very meticulously, precisely. But if you uh, keep one, all the metrics in one place and compare one metric with another metric, such an easier, so you can take very interesting decision. That is the advantage of dashboard. It's absolutely a pictorial representation, which uh, communicates a lot of information in one place. That's what. And uh, some, uh, so Mr. Jibin has asked about the statistical tools. Sir, you can use uh, ISPSS, absolutely you can use, or also you can use, or Studio also you can use, Hadoop also you can use, right? And uh, so all these statistical tools which you can use it, I can easily uh, uh, predict. And Ms. Anuska from uh, Scope of People Analytics in the upcoming future. So now the company is, uh, it's a very interesting question. Still HR analytics and people analytics uh, uh, it's a already it got emerged. It's a very buzz word. Okay. But the companies are not ready to invest in HR analytics. Maybe the big companies like Google and LinkedIn. So Accenture, all these companies have invested huge money. Uh, but if you take the uh, normal company, they're not interested because it needs a lot of time. Employees have to be trying and you have to invest a lot of money as well. Right. And eventually, uh, so the return on investment, it takes a lot of time. So maybe that company's perspective, whatever they want to invest, they need a money immediately. 
So I would say very interesting point. So I have to invest, train your employees, invest a lot, right? And please wait quite some time. Certainly the analytics will provide very good business to you people. Right? So that's what uh, pertaining to the analytics. Collect as much data as possible, but utilize the data very wisely. Apply your critical thinking process very wisely. Is the dashboard is automated and if so, what tool is used? Dashboard can be, Mr. Chandra Kumar had asked the question. So uh, dashboard is automated. Yes, of course, the dashboard can be created even through the Excel or even the uh, use, you can use Excel also, you can use a create a dashboard. It's just a small pictorial representation, right? Whatever data you just uh, enter in the respective uh, uh, Excel or SPSS, so we can create a dashboard with the help of that, right? So it can easily, you can create it. Uh, it's a very interesting question from ma'am Anupama, right? Uh, so analytics is all about quanti is it only quantitative metrics or it is a qualitative metrics? No, already I have uh, explained uh, both the aspect. Analytics is applicable to quantitative and as well as qualitative as well. I think you have, all you people have a very important information uh, uh, about quantitative uh, analytics but what about the qualitative analytics qualitative analytics it's all about your text phrases your pricing the mail right the way you communicate what words are you using so all these things are connected to the people brand so people mindset exactly what kind of people so we can easily understand that that's what exactly the google oxygen it's all about it's a combination of quantitative and as well as qualitative Right. So that entire eight key areas, the employees have recommended, absolutely, it was a qualitative uh, uh, things exactly. Be a good coach. That sentence is a qualitative analytic, which means that many people so wrote uh, to the company. So the manager is supposed to be a good coach. The manager should be a uh, good communicator. The manager should be the good technical skill person. This is called as a qualitative analytic. The words which is repeatedly coming from many people. It could be the positive and as well as the negative. So that's called qualitative analytics, text analytics today. We have very uh, interesting information. Today, the talent acquisition HR people, the moment we are going to recruit people, right? Absolutely, we are look, uh, looking at the individual LinkedIn data and as well as Facebook data. For example, how, what are the posts are you putting into the Facebook? Right? What are the posts are you uh, keeping to the Facebook? And so what are the comments are you keeping uh, on the Facebook? Certainly we are going to see the post and we are going to see the comments exactly, right? That comments is a qualitative information, right? So the comments is uh, very strong and condemning comments. I, I won't say you are not supposed to criticize or condemning, but as a, a person, I have a organization culture so that your comments and your personality should match with my organization culture. Certainly I will recruit, otherwise I won't recruit. Irrespective of uh, whatever knowledge you have, skills and knowledge if you possess, I won't take a call. Right. Thank you. Yeah, the question is pertaining to Swami. Uh, yes, the question is pertaining to the functional and dysfunctional chain over. So, uh, and what point you are supposed to take a decision, functional and dysfunctional turnover. So having said that uh, the employee is really very good. The employee is a search for the organization. The employee is commitment and uh, uh, is a highly hard work employees. That employee will leave. That's called as a dysfunctional turnover. So here as a HR manager, immediately you have to convince employees, understand his problem, and you have to take a call to retain the employees. Right. So, but uh, if it is a functional turnover, the employee is not asset for the organization. Better you just, uh, so if the employee wants to leave, let him leave. Because it since the employee is a liability, you don't want to. You feel so the employee is not asset for the organization. You don't want to retain, so let him leave. So that's not an issue for the organization. So that decisions which you have to see the what level you have to what what employee have to retain, what employees you have to uh, not retain. You have to take a call. So fine, so with this, uh, thank you so much uh, uh, participants for your uh, patience listening. So, uh, so I'd like to thank all you people for your patience listening. So at this juncture, I'd like to thank uh, my Dean, 
डॉक्टर एच मुरलीधरन माय एकेडमिक हेड डॉक्टर सविता रानी मैम एंड माय एमडीपी टीम सो टू प्रोवाइड सच अ वंडरफुल अपॉर्चुनिटी टू मी टू टेक द सेशन ऑन पीपल एनालिटिक्स थ्रू द वेबिनार टू मीट यू पीपल एब्सोल्युटली आई से माय थैंक यू ऑल दिस पीपल फॉर दिस इंटरेस्टिंग सेशन सो थैंक यू सो मच ऑन द समदर ओकेजन सेशन लीव वी विल मीट थैंक यू सो मच फॉर योर पार्टिसिपेशन thank you so much